Here with Poppins on a windy, blustery day. We are headed to the Sioux Locks, Canadian side, to lock through and to uh, experience the lock through process. Channel's Restless Viking, this is Poppins. I'm the Viking. Let's go see the locks. So when you launch at Ashen Bay, especially if you launch by kayak, you have to keep track of the American Canal right there to see uh, if any traffic's coming. You can see the International Bridge off in the distance. No traffic on it because of COVID-19. Something I uh, never thought I'd see. Oh, there's one truck on, on the bridge. Usually it's pretty busy on a weekend, especially a Sunday, but uh, nothing going on today. We're gonna head over that way by the Algoma Steel Plant and we're gonna lock to the Canadian side and talk a little bit about the history once we get out of this wind. There are two separate sets of locks at Sault Ste. Marie. On the American side, there are the well-known four commercial locks meant for larger traffic. Though you could probably convince them to take your small motorized boat through, but they're not gonna let you take your kayak. On the Canadian side are the lesser known recreational locks where we were headed. The Canadian locks have a pretty eventful history. The first lock was built in 1798 by the Northwest Trading Company, and it was destroyed by the Americans in 1814 during the War of 1812. Now that lock wasn't rebuilt because Canadian traffic could utilize the American locks on the other side of the river. But that all changed in 1870 when the U.S. denied passage of their lock to a Colonel Wolseley. The Colonel was on his way to put down an incident called the Red River Rebellion. You see, five years earlier, Wolseley was a Confederate sympathizer and advisor during the Civil War. It was dubbed the Chicora Incident after the ship that the expedition was on. Well, they eventually worked it out, but Canada was like, I want out of this toxic relationship, so they decided to pursue their own path of personal growth and independence. And they built their own lock, which was completed in 1895. Hopefully you can hear me in the wind. That's the Algoma Steel Company. It's got a long history of owning and not owning and selling and bankruptcies and all kinds of things. It's, just, it's, it's got a long history here in northern Michigan and Canada. You can see the limestone piled up for the steel process and the iron pellets. You can even see the, the furnaces. Pretty cool. Uh, they've been around a long time. They've owned railroads. They're one of the last owners of a wilderness flag down railroad here in uh, North America, just north of the Sioux. Um, the same line that runs the Algoma Central Railway tour train. They used to own that. Fourteen years after the lock was complete in 1909, a U.S. ore boat named the Perry G. Walker was trying to take cuts in front of heavy traffic waiting the lock through upbound. As the boat approached the lower gates, the jackass captain's orders were misunderstood and the ship smashed into the lower gates. So the lower gates rupture, the locks are full of water, with two ships in the locks, and the upper gates are still open. So now the entire volume of Lake Superior is trying to rush into Lake Huron through the canal and three ships are cascading out of the locks and downriver. So yeah, it's kind of a nightmare scenario, except that there was a plan in place for this. Within a few hours, an emergency swing dam was activated and the lock was sealed off and drained, and amazingly, the Canadians repair the lock in just 12 days. The ships were repaired, the Perry Walker is fined, and life goes on. Train bridge, swinging train bridge, swings around, Next to the other side, off to the United States. PDX 23 Canadian Canal, this is the Act Door. Street 3 here, go ahead. Yeah, we're a little ways behind the tour boat if you'll uh, let us in downbound. Okay, sounds good. Uh, just follow them in. Roger that.
it's recording right now. So just, uh, yeah. But how do I do the lines and record? Yeah. Okay, anywhere on the wall there's a line. Okay. And uh, you will be first out, eh? So the gate stop will you? All right, roger that. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Have to do the line. Yeah. I'll let you do yours first. Take the next one up. Let, let, let us get close to the wall. Keep it tight. Alright, so I can get this one. tight now. Just keep us from smashing into them. Say hi to YouTube. <laughs> Say hi to YouTube. <laughs> as long as you keep the lines. He just got in there. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. The opening of the Sault Ste. Marie Antonio ship canal completely did the last night in an all Canadian waterway along the St. Lawrence River system. Departing at Fort Commercial Highway, this canal facilitates the St. Lawrence Seaway. What's that? Restless hyphen Viking. The other one. He seems to know. He does. Mr. Duck. There's a duck up at the other gate that snuck in at the last minute of the gate. The upbound gate. And he seems to be waiting, knowing that that gate's going to open to get out of here. I've never seen a duck lock. <laughs> Maybe it just might be stuck. There they go. This is the blue zone. This is where you're supposed to wait. If you have to wait. Grab yourself a cleat. Notice it's floating. So it goes up and down. coming directly in and it's not easy to grab a, <laughs> a cable when your boat's getting blown all over the place but they're getting it so I think the wind uh, just kicked up just while we we're in the canal to make it more challenging to hook up it's kind of died down now and 
here at least. <laughs> I, I should have got a video of <laughs> We just blow out of here. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Don't work too hard today, huh? <laughs> Bus mark. This one swings out over the water. And those little gates right there, the whole thing will fall down. We'll drive in down to the water and prevent the water from flowing in. So the water would be coming at us once the uh, dam is deployed. And it worked once. Put to the test. <laughs> <laughs> 